Alright guys, so it's the time of the year to make a new tutorial on how to make a ROS server on Windows 10. Um, just self-hosting. And this time it's going to be very foolproofed. Like, you should not be able to mess this up. Just follow my steps. I'm going to have this in the description below. Or you can just click on the card above and then it should download it. I'll actually download the two here. But now you're going to have one of these steamcnd.zips and uh, so simplicity let's just make a folder on the desktop and call it um, rust server double click and then we're gonna go into this folder we're gonna make some folder called actual actual server and then we're gonna call the other folder steam cmd uh, we're gonna drag the only steam cmd into the steam cmd folder now we have the steam cmd here oh there we go we want to paste this into the Steam console, and then we want to redo some stuff here. Um, so we want to, our actual Rust server is going to be here. So we need to copy this path and then put it right here. Just not. Let's copy the first and actually see. Put this into the run as administrator. Right now it's extracting the Steam server things here. So this is just uh, you can say the base part of the. So you can like this is just the part that's going to be used to connect to the Steam servers. There we go. Now it's just we can probably do this like this. There we go. Just copy all this in. That puts it in here. Enter. Now it should be downloading to this folder. Yes, you can see it's downloading in here. And now that we're at it, we might as well. So here I have one of my configs, my old root configs. And here we have the Steam SteamCMD.exe. So we want to go here, then we want to copy this, there we go, and then this part should also be changed. I have like a weird tendency to save everything that I'm doing. But um, then we can just give it that port, and then we'll just give it another name. Um, so the server header image, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious that you just get a URL. But if you're not sure how to get a URL, you just go here and then just whatever you want. Um, <laughs> just get this picture. We copy the image address, and then we get this. There we go. And then server identity, let's just give it, change it to test. And then the Archon password, that's pretty important. You should probably change that to something uncrackable, maybe something like this. 
that should be pretty decent. Um, and there we go, that should be pretty much it for that config. So now we want to give it something, now we want to save it. A start dot bat, but it could be anything, just call it xddd dot bat. And then remember to change the format to all files, so it'll actually become a bat file. Let's uh, just save it on the desktop for now. Where is it? Yes, there we go. It's a bat file. Right here. There we go. It's successfully installed. Now we have the server right here. We're gonna drag in the xdddd.bat in here. We're gonna run it as administrator. And we're gonna be connecting. It's gonna take a while. But now that we've done that, let's set up some port forwarding so people from like other states, other countries, or other neighborhoods, or whatever, whatever you want to call it, can join your server. So we want to go under uh, just PowerShell to check your IP config. As you can see, um, this is our computer's IP address, and our default gateway is this right here. So we want to copy this with Control C. Then just open a web browser, like here, and then paste it in here. And then you need to log in. Usually the password and the username is admin, and then admin for the password and the username. But it can variate, so I recommend you check behind your router. It's some access control, this little shield thing here. Then we have port forwarding. And then we can custom service name. We can call it whatever we want. I'm just gonna call it Rust. So keep it simplistic. And then we want TCP and UDP. And then external host is gonna be this star. And this star means everyone can join. Or you can just leave it empty. That also means everyone can join. But just in case, put a star here. So we saw that our internal for the computer was 192.168.1.18. So we're going to copy this and put it into the internal host. And the external port is just this and this. What the hell? Does it seem like this is working properly? Let's close it and edit it again. I think it's not uh, working properly. It's because it needs to be in one long like text format. It doesn't seem like it is. Yeah, it isn't. Let's try again. I don't know why it should not be working. Then just get this on private networks. Yeah, and one better thing to do while we're at it is to go under, here we go, We have I have a wired network, but this can be done with Wi-Fi as well. We want to go on properties, and then we want to go on, let's go back, Ethernet, change adapter options, we're using this one right now, properties, and then let's give it a static IP, oh shit. 192.168.140, I think it was, was it? 118. Default gateway would just be the, this. And then the DNS, just. There you go, now it should be static. What do you mean?
There is internet, it's just saying, oh, I had some issue, there's no issue. Everything is clearly working right now. It's called allow app through the firewall. Just type R on the keyboard. You should see Rust, uh, Rust dedicated, exe. You should just allow everything through, like this. Then just go down to S, like Steam. And just allow everything, just check that. Check that, check that, check that. Uh, and that should be it. Uh, let's check, okay. Then we should have everything. Just ignore all those error messages, they don't matter. Alright, let's open up Rust while we're at it. Oh, it's up, okay. As you can see, the server is up now. You should be able to see it on, on these things on the menu here. And then the way that your friends will join the server is by going connecting to your public IP. So they will type um, connect, then your public IP. The quickest way is just what's, what's my IP? And uh, this is the IP. So we take it and then paste it in here with the colon and port. And bam, we're connecting to the test server. This is insane. Wow. And if it's not uh, working, the port forwarding is not working, uh, it will actually tell you if it's not working. So, yeah. And then it's unfavorited. So, yeah, it's clearly up and everyone can join it that have access to it, at least. So hopefully you learned something new and maybe got a server running with your friends to play PvE or whatever. And next video will probably be how to install mods for this ROS server now. Um, some cool mods would probably be like Skinbox, etc. And maybe kids. But anyways, have a good one.